right, so just recently I saw a video online called how to make fire with a lemon. The guy was using one lemon, some steel wool, some zinc nails, and what he called copper clips. But these are actually brass clips. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna try to duplicate what he did and see if we can make fire. I don't think we can, so we're gonna use Ohm's Law and a multimeter, a little bit of science, to debunk that claim that you can make fire using a single lemon. And if we cannot successfully make fire with a lemon, the way that it was done in the video, we will try to figure out, calculate what we would need to do to create a fire with a lemon, or we will simulate something and we will make fire with a lemon. And that original video got 20 million views so far in 11 months. If you like this video and you like real information that's not a lie, make sure you share it and get the good information out there. Who are you going to send the video to? I don't know. Just send it to whoever you want. Pick up this 23 pack of zinc nails. I'm also going to pick up this set of galvanized nails. Galvanized nails are basically just steel nails that are coated in zinc anyway, so this outside coating should be zinc. And the first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate the experiment of the video. So we have six clips, six nails, a lemon, and some wire. So this is how it was set up in the video before these were wired in series. So the claim in the video was that these were wired in series and you could step this up to five volt. So before we wire them up, take the multimeter leads and we'll just see what we get. Right now we're at about 0.68. Let's test all the way on the other end. We're at about 0.63. So any one of these leads that we check, we are at about 0.6. So now let's wire these in series. We'll see what we get. Yep. Now I have them all wired up in series, just like it showed in the video. We'll take the positive over here, negative over here, and the multimeter, and see if we get a higher voltage. So we got about 0.49 now. Let's, let's do a test here. We're at 0.49. I'll undo one of these leads. Now let's just test from here to here. 0 0.6. 0 0.6. Now let's test from here to here. 0.54. So I actually have higher voltage as I start to unwrap these. 0.62. So I actually lose voltage wiring these in series. And when I unwrap them, I get the same voltage again. So here we go. So, so far it's not looking so hot for this. We see the same voltage across whether we have them wired in series or not. We're still seeing around the same 0.6 voltage. So that's interesting. But also, what else was interesting was when I did wrap them in series and I measured from here to here, I actually saw a slightly lower voltage, which doesn't really help. We're not getting the five volts. Something else that we need to consider is the amount of amperage that we're getting. So the total amount of power that we need to make a spark. So now let's go through, we'll do the same thing and we'll measure the amount of amperage that we're actually seeing through the lemon. All right, now we're back with the lemon all wrapped up. Now let's measure the amount of current or amperage that we're getting. All right, now the only thing I have different is the multimeters set up on amps. I have the lead switched. This is set on amperage. And we are fluctuating between zero and one milliamp. So if I had them wired up, we're fluctuating between zero and one milliamp. Again, so again, with the current and the voltage, we see no change with them wrapped or unwrapped. Now that we've confirmed that it doesn't matter whether they're wired in series or whether you're just measuring straight across the leads, and we know that 
we were making 0.62 volts and approximately one milliamp. Let's talk about the total amount of power that is making. So power, here's where Ohm's law comes in. So power is measured in, in volts times amps. So if we're taking that 0.62 volts multiplied by one milliamp, you get 0.62 milliwatts of power. So less than one milliwatt of power. So let's see if 0.62 milliwatts of power is enough to make a spark. Hmm. To my surprise, I'm not getting nothing. Just for clarity too, 0.62 milliwatts is 0 0.00062 watts. That's a lot of zeros. I guess the next question I would have is about the steel wool and how much power, total power, volts times amps, does it take to make a spark? We can play with the voltage, we can play with the amperage, but what do we actually need here to make a spark? Let's test and see if we can get a spark using a AA battery and some steel wool. We can get some little tiny ones. It's a little tough, but we can get some small ones. It's nothing extravagant like in the other video and probably not enough to start a piece of paper. Ooh, that one might have been good. All right, so we know that it's possible. We determine that we can make a spark using this battery. Let's determine the total amount of power that we we're making with this, power being volts times amps. The DC voltage of the battery, it's a normal AA battery, so it should be one and a half volts. So we are measuring 5.3, we'll call it 5 amps. So we tested our battery, makes 1.5 volts and 5 amps it's for a total of 7.5 watts. Just some rough math here, one lemon equals 0.62 milliwatts or 0 0.00062 watts. We need 7.5 watts to make a spark. So in order to make this maintaining the same 0.62 voltage that we miss off from the lemon, we would need 12.09 amps of current. If each lemon is making one milliamp, we would need 12,090 lemons to make seven and a half watts. But that would be wired in parallel, maintaining the same voltage and increasing the current. So let's try it the other way, wiring it in series. We'll do, we'll take 10 lemons, wire them all in series, we will increase the voltage, and then we'll measure, and then using these 10 lemons, based on the power that we measure, we'll determine how many lemons we would need to make seven and a half watts. Now that we have all the lemons pinned, I'll go through and then wire each one of these in series. All 10 lemons wired in series. DC volts first. We have 2.6 volts. Now let's measure amps. The current is staying the same, but the voltage is higher. So we're still getting one milliamp, but we do have a higher voltage. The voltage does seem a little bit low, so I took all of the leads and put them a lot closer together instead of on opposite sides of the lemon. Let's see if we have a different reading now. 3.7. We'll go with benefit of the doubt and I'll give it 3.7 because that's the highest that I saw. Here's the rough math again. 10 lemons made 3.7 volts times 0 0.001 amps or 1 milliamp made 0 0.0037 watts. So to get this 7.5 watts that we need to make a spark divided by 0.0037 watts because these are both in watts we're talking about the amount of circuits that we would need. So these are both in watts, divided by the 0 0.0037 that the 10 lemon circuit made, we would need 2,027 10 lemon circuits. So this whole circuit, 2,000 times. But just for kicks, let's see what it does. Do we get a spark? No, no. No spark. We got nothing. We got nothing, dude. All right. So how are we going to make fire with a lemon? Don't know. Don't know. I don't either. Best way that I've come up with. You go to the super center and you buy a super lemon. 
and then you just do the same thing and then you can get all the spark that you want out of it it works out pretty nice see how well that works super center super lemon section super duper so this is how i got fire from a lemon so second best option for fire from a lemon is uh the fire from the lemon it's not too bad you're really in a pickle and all you have is one of those dud lemons but you really need fire you got fire from a lemon pretty slick we made mm -hmm. fire with a lemon mm -hmm. okay i'm not gonna say that i was surprised by these results i would played with this kind of stuff before so kind of expected to see what was gonna happen so I'll show you what what we're basically doing here when you're doing that with the lemon I'll basically show you why I wasn't wasn't very surprised so if we take a, an American pre 1982 penny which is all copper and just a regular zinc washer this is the same concept as what we're doing inside the lemon so to show you that I'm going to use this as the electrolyte cut open a lemon I'm gonna soak this in the lemon juice. I'll set it on top of the washer, which is on top of the penny. And now we can just measure voltage directly from this. Negative on the bottom. Positive on the top, and we got 0.86 volts. So this has a lot of electrolyte inside the inside the towel, which is why the voltage is a little bit higher. Yeah. But it's the same concept, just from this little setup here. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Fire with a lemon. Possible, yes, but not really realistic. So this can be explained by a chemical reaction that's happening inside of the lemon. You have an anode and a cathode, or your positive and negative. You have oxidation on this side, reduction on this side. The oxidation is causing the electrons to flow across the lemon, and that's where you get your electricity from. So that's about that. Pretty simple explanation of it. There's a lot more to it, but I'm not a scientist, so. So that was just. I should. I can be a scientist, but I'm not. So that was just a brief explanation. So the original video, video got 20 million views. I challenge you guys to share this and see if we can get 20 million views on the right information and not a hoax. Uh, if you like the video, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more, give me some ideas. Let me know what you want to see. Um, a lemon with headphones in a face. A lemon with headphones in a face. A lemon with headphones in a face. Oh, yeah. you guys got to see this. Show me the lemon with. The headphones. A eye, not eye. Mm -hmm. Nose. Mouth. So, if anything, the lemons are definitely good for making headphones and a face. Gotta love it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>